so my primary argument is that postprandial exercise is the optimal strategy to reduce hyperglycemia and improve HbA1c uh, in individuals with or at risk for type 2 diabetes. We know that hyperglycemia, particularly following meals, is a concern for people with prediabetes and type 2 diabetes. Um, and is one of the largest predictors or contributors to elevations in HbA1c for a lot of individuals. And so really important to try to tackle that. I'd say my primary argument in favor of fasting exercise uh, for people with type 2 diabetes would be that it addresses more directly some of the underlying problems. And I would say it's both in terms of how we store carbohydrates and the or glucose as glycogen in muscle and liver, but also how we store fat in adipose tissue, but also in, in muscle and, and, and other tissues. It would seem that a lot of the insulin resistance and problems with insulin secretion occur when we can't store the, these excess carbohydrates and fats, and then so it leads to, a, to lots of complications. I highlighted a lot of evidence that if you exercise in the postprandial state, so following a meal, you will immediately reduce hyperglycemia. One by Verboven and colleagues that did 12 weeks of exercise training uh, in individuals with type 2 diabetes, and they either exercised in the overnight fasted state or the postprandial state. And over the 12 weeks, they found that it was only the group that exercised in the postprandial state that had reductions in their HbA1c, I think by about 0.3 percent uh, from pre to post training again so at the end of the 12 weeks for our debate on on glucose management i i emphasized the, the glycogen one so it just compared 60 minutes of aerobic exercise performed uh, in the morning after a overnight fast and the key thing we, we see in that study is that well over the, over the day glucose and insulin look quite similar in both conditions as we would expect in, in, in healthy people. But if the fasted exercise decrease muscle glycogen more, that's because, as I mentioned, we're not using that fuel that's coming in from the gut. And so we, ha we have to rely more on our, uh, our glycogen reserves. And it was particularly evident in the liver. And this is where I, I think uh, more research is needed on the, this idea of fasted exercise, in particular what happens to the liver. And there were about 15 studies that looked at this exercise meal timing. Um, and from this meta-analysis that included so many studies, they concluded that postprandial exercise was the optimal strategy for reducing the hyperglycemia from that individual meal. Uh, as it was more effective than if you did the same amount of exercise before the meal, or even if you had delayed exercise so that it was hours after the meal. So the, the key message was that you wanna do postprandial activity as quickly as possible following the meal to achieve the optimal reductions and the, the greatest reductions in hyperglycemia. Well, I would say there's, there's probably more evidence to support postprandial exercise in terms of those acute reductions. There's less evidence on fasting exercise. I think in, in many ways, it's, it's a newer concept. Even in the athlete world, it took a while before they realized, well, maybe there's a difference between how to perform optimally, where you might require those carbohydrates, and how to train optimally to get the adaptations you're, you're looking for. So there's certainly strong arguments on both sides. Um, some longer term studies have shown that if you exercise training in the fasted state, you get greater improvements in insulin sensitivity uh, over time, such as over six or 12 weeks of training. Um, However, the majority of those studies have been in lean, healthy males. Um, and it's not that it may not work in individuals with type 2 diabetes or in females for that matter, but we just don't know yet. I totally agree that uh, those studies in athletes may not be representative of uh, the results in people with diabetes. And, and that's why we need more studies in that area. If you look at the amount of exercise they asked the people to do, it was quite substantial. Uh, 300 minutes a week, 360 minutes a week. But the question remains, is, it, is, is that the reason why those studies and athletes tended to show uh, better results? Or is it the outcomes they measured? Or is it, is it other things of, of that nature? I think the acute effects are, are fairly indisputable in that if you're going to perform a single bout of exercise and are looking to lower your blood glucose concentrations on that day, then postprandial is the way to go. And this is supported by meta-analyses at this point that the timing of 
activity following a meal seems to be most optimal if you want an immediate benefit. And I think this is a really great message for people because you don't need to train for 12 weeks to see an adaptation. Although this is preliminary, there seems to be some better adaptations that you can get in the long term with incorporating some fasted exercise. How much is still being figured out? Uh, but the preliminary evidence suggests that there could be some benefits in the long term of exercising in the fasted state.